Hi there, welcome back to the channel. As you may know, in AWS reInvent 2024, there has been a lot of amazing announcement. One of the announcement was Amazon DynamoDB Zero ETL integration with SageMaker Lakehouse. Amazon has really simplified the way you bring data into your data lake, reducing uh, the operational overhead, right? So if you want to bring data from your operational databases into data lakehouse, uh, of course, Iceberg, Amazon Zero ETL integration allows you to define your source, target, and basically Amazon does all the uh, hard work behind the scenes. And then, of course, once the data is there in the iceberg table, it is cataloged with Glue Hive Metastore. Now you can run uh, analytics on the, this data. You can query this with Athena, Spark, uh, of course, Trino. You can use DuckDB or any other query engine of your choice. So this video, I will show you how to get started with DynamoDB Zero ETL integration with an amazing hands-on lab. So let's get started. All right, so the first step is we need a DynamoDB table and either you can use the console or you can use the CLI. I prefer using CLI. I'm gonna create a table called user, okay? And this is gonna be in the US East one. So, okay, I will fire this command and it looks like my DynamoDB table has been created, okay? So if I go to my uh, console, I have a table called users. Great, once you have the table, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be enabling point in time recovery. So I'm gonna come here. Again, you can do that through the console too, right? You can come here and you can just say edit PITR and then you can un enable it, right? But I'm gonna do it through the console, okay? So that's done, good. Now I'm just gonna refresh that. As you can see, that's enabled now, okay? Now I'm gonna insert some sample data into DynamoDB. So I will insert about four records. One, two, three, four, looks good. Explore table. Uh, and, and of course you can see I have uh, four data points. Oops, I have four data points on my DynamoDB as you can see, right? So step one, you know, just go ahead, create a DynamoDB table, enable PITR and insert some mock data into it. Now step two is we need to attach DynamoDB resource policy. I will show you, don't worry, man. I'll make it easy for you. So we're gonna copy this uh, uh, command. AWS DynamoDB put, uh, put a resource policy and then I'm gonna put this resource policy. Uh, looks like an error, error occurred while uh, calling put resource operation request resource not found. Oh, I see. The table name is user and I have users, so which is why uh, it basically complained. So I'm gonna uh, fix that and then copy this command again. Lovely, looks good, right? Uh, now if I come to my DynamoDB, go to tables, click on users, and head over all the way to permissions and here I can see that resource based policy for the table has been added. All right, step three, we need to define our zero ETL integration, which is almost a piece of cake. So I'm gonna go to zero ETL integration over here on the management console and click on create zero ETL integration. I'm gonna select my DynamoDB, click on next. And then here I'm gonna select the table user. I'm gonna specify the account. This is uh, my target is gonna be in this account. Uh, I'm gonna be using the Glue default database, but you can, of course, use any other database that you like, uh, right? Or you can create a new one um, uh, uh, based on your needs, right? I have a role called my Glue DynamoDB role. Again, this particular role, how you can create it, create it, it's there on my GitHub, right? So commands are given, right? So again, all I'm showing you is I'm selecting that particular role over here, okay? I'm gonna unnest all the fields, right? And then um, I'm gonna configure the target table name to user. I'm gonna click next, uh, looks great. And here the refresh interval is by default to 15 minutes. I cannot update it, it's uh, default, right? And here I'm gonna say zero ETL test, whatever you like, probably. Click next, review your settings, click on create. Now at this point, this will take a couple of minutes. And once this is ready, it will say probably, you know, like running or activated, right? So now at this point, I'm gonna pause the video and once the status changes, I'm gonna resume it. Uh, you probably may see my uh, status has changed to active. Now what's gonna happen is uh, if you go to this Glue database, right? I do not have anything at the moment. So, oh, actually it, all, it created a table. Oh, that's great, so that was pretty quick. So I do see a table called user and then I see a table called state. This will tell you what the state is about that table, right? So now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I will head over to S3. Uh, actually, I can just click here and it should probably navigate me to the S3. And if you observe here, 
right? I see a table user, I see an iceberg table. Again, I did not make it, AWS made it for me, right? So data, that's the Parquet file, and then probably inside metadata, I would see the Avro files, right? So here you can see how flawlessly, in a matter of probably minutes, we were able to do a zero ATL integration, right? Now, hey, okay, cool, cool. Well, can I query this? Well, of course, of course. So I can head over to Hatina or any other query engine that you like, right? So uh, I'm gonna switch to default and I can query this table. And I should see some data. Here you can see Bob, Alice, Saumil, and Charlie. So fantastic, right? Hey, you said about DuckDB, right? How, how to do that? So now let me show you about the DuckDB part. So I have a script again, it's there on my GitHub. Uh, this script, uh, as you can see, it will take the bucket name and the path where your iceberg table is. And what this script does, basically in simple words, it's it's gonna, it's gonna, so I have wrote a class, right? So if you can see probably, or, or a function, how I would like to call, it's gonna grab the latest metadata file and then it's gonna query the iceberg table, right? So if you observe there, iceberg scan, right? And then that's the path to the to, to that, right? So now let me show you, right? So now copy Python uh, Python 3, and I'm just gonna run this. Here you can see that's the latest metadata. And now I can query the same data in, uh, of course, DuckDB. You can also query this in Star Rocks or any other query engine of your or of your choice, right? So that's all. That's all I have for the video. My goal was to make it easy for you, uh, the integration guide, right? Now I do have two very important questions here. Number one, I for my personal knowledge, I am trying to understand, okay, I know that it uses exports in DynamoDB. Now the question comes for a massive large table, is it doing a full export every time? Because that could be very expensive. So what I wanna understand is, is it doing incremental exports or is it doing full exports? So that's one thing I wanna understand. And the second thing is I wanna understand is the cost aspect. I'm gonna read a little bit more, but I hope you have enjoyed the guide. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them. That being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you in the next video.